In Defense of Kids is a brand new program, television made for movie, right here on 1011 Strong, starring Vlad Daner and Sam Waterston. These two people have been around in the theater, I will tell you. Acting <laughs> credits, <laughs> Just a galore. Minute. Been around in the theater. Now, th this, is, this is In Defense of Children. We're going to see a little scene from the kids. movie right now. Uh, in Defense of Kids. kids yeah. Would you set it up? Tell us what we expect to see. The scene that you'll see is where Ellen is deciding whether she should give up her lucrative law practice and become a lawyer without any substantial income, or any income really, really hoping to get grants, uh, and defend children who are in trouble. And uh, she's there having it We're out. We're talking it over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's watch the scene now. Remember those $80 hiking boots that you brought that were so expensive that they hurt your feet and you wore them anyway? Uh-huh. And hiking became this awful thing? Because of the boots. Right. You sunk all that money into the boots, but they were a mistake. And you should have taken the laws, right? Right. Why are we talking about boots? Why not? We're talking about how I've invested many years and many dollars into contract law and how nothing felt so good as mapping out strategy for this kid, Alex, and how nothing felt so bad as botching up Marie's case. And if you're right and there are hundreds of kids in this city that need a lawyer, then that's what I want to do. Quit your job? Yes. Where they pay you a salary? I don't know. We aren't going to get clients or an office or anything, but I've decided. I guess money's going to be a problem, too, huh? Well, as long as you've thought it all out. Sam, what was the dog's name? I don't Rudy. remember. Rooney! Good for you. Rooney? You know me. I never Rooney. remember anything. Did, Rooney. You call him and he came to Rooney. Yep. Rooney. Rooney. Oh, very, very good. Well, he came sometimes if you had dog <laughs> yummies in your hand. Sam is a very busy actor. We saw him not too long ago as Oppenheimer on PBS. We saw him with Loretta Swit in Games, Mother Never Taught Me. Taught we you. We saw you. Not you. We saw you in QED, Quod, Erat, Demonstratum. Ooh, how right. about that? Good for you're you. You're really on top of things here. <laughs> Listen, hopscotch. I know all your other credits. Let's see. What, Let's what else? Let's see how many you can do. Children of the Sun, Three Sisters. Children of the Sun, <laughs> Three <laughs> Sisters, what? No, these yes. are plays, not yes, Children of the Sun, plays. the other Garky enemy. Yeah. You were in Three Sisters? Yes, and we did Enemies just, together in the summer theater. That's just in New York. Enemy, Enemy of the People? No, no. Enemies. Enemies. Just, en just Enemies, Gorky. A light little play about Russian. the Russian Revolution. That's a lot of this. Oops. Bello. Maya Gorman. Oh, <laughs> we'll be banging. Gulper, we'll be making a... So you two have actually worked together before. Yes. Yeah. Which is very nice. You have an automatic rapport. You know, you get you get all the, all of that first few days strain out of the way of sort of trying to get to know somebody and mm -hmm. see how they work. And it's... what does he give you, Blythe, when you work with him? What kind of response? Himself. He's completely there. His great artistry and his tender sweetness, and he's, he's fabulous. Well, no, does he inspire you? Or? Yes. I, when I worked with Sam this summer, we had one of the hardest things to do on stage that I've ever done, and it was sheer agony. But I knew that the, this fellow actor that I had to work with, who could have made it even more hell, was so giving and, and so there, and he had to, and the character was supposed to be very much inside himself. Well. I wish I had a tape recorder or something for and this. It, it would, but it was very difficult, you know, and it really can, especially when you're doing those really hard parts, it can be mm -hmm. just awful if your actor isn't there to get. And it's really, it's just, it's not ever having to do with you. It, it really has to do with what goes on between the in two. In the air. Two of you or three of you or however many are on stage. Well, Sam has quite a background in the classic theater and in Shakespeare. Also, you too. You too, of course. Yeah. Um, but. Can you cry, Sam? Do you cry? <laughs> <laughs> Can I cry? You want to see? I had an acting teacher who used to be able to do that. Just turn He's just it on. Just sitting around like this, and he'd say, and one of the things you have to be able to do if you want to act is cry. I love but that. Just cry. Is, is it hard for you? It doesn't come to me like that. It doesn't come easily, huh? Well, actually, in plays, you know, you get to practice running up to the same event over and over again, and it gets easier to cry or laugh or whatever. Well, what do you have it's to harder personally when it's sudden. to bring it, to make it happen? You have to think of grim things, but, uh, uh, and usually it comes for me out of the specific situation. 
So it's an act of the imagination, really. Are you bringing yourself into it, though, within the framework of the character? If my imagination if is part of me, then no yeah, sure. It. Can you cry easily? No. You seem to be a delicate kind of frail, fragile thing, I would think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would think that, that, make would, something that, that would come easily. I no, it seemed to me. It doesn't. I'm terrible at it. And that's why really? I always feel, yeah, especially in film, it's hard because you have to repeat things. You have to do the far shot and the close up. and far, It's really agony. It's hard. If I get it once, I usually say to the director, please do the close shot first if it's emotional and get it out of the way, because that's the, inevitably what they'll use for the, for the shot if you, have to have, if you have to be teary or emotional. Mm -hmm. It's real hard. I don't know how people act. How do they? <laughs> when I see these wonderful actors as, and actresses on film, I'm just really stunned how they can do it. It's hard. Well, you, what do you mean? You do it? No, no, uh, very, very, very sporadically. I like to, oh, I like to be on stage because I can't hit a moving target, you know. And also on stage it's easier. I think it's much easier to do all that. Than for television? Uh, or, or film. Maybe. For me, Sam loves it all and does it all brilliantly. Some of us are, are cut out for one thing, I think, more than another. I always feel more comfortable on stage because I like to move. Well, what about the audience reaction? Because they are there that's and nice you too. do feel that response. Yeah, that's a big part of it. And it doesn't matter to you. I mean, well, it if matters you can do them to all, me. If you can do them all, it doesn't matter whether it's a camera or whether it's uh, 150 no, it people doesn't. out there. It doesn't. And there are also there are insane different kinds of insane pleasures that you get. Uh, you have to have you have to be a little crazy to do this, <laughs> to enjoy um, doing tying a little rope around around a little post 21 times as I did once in doing The Great Gatsby. Get out of the boat, step up onto the dock, tie a knot around the What was wrong with the way you did it? There wasn't anything particularly <laughs> wrong with any of the ways. Just do that again the same way. And mean like shooting when I got to the twentieth time and I realized that I was really having a good time, then I realized <laughs> <laughs> that I was both a little crazy and that maybe this was the business for me. Have you ever played anybody insane? Yes. Who who do you well, know I, recall? The, the one that's leaps to mind is uh, we did a, a remake of Diabolique mm. for television Tuesday Weld and, and John Hackett and I mm -hmm. and I played the guy that comes up out of the bathtub who's supposed to be dead you know and scares his wife to because death. you see now look at his eyes his eyes he, they're very closely set eyes <laughs> and I would oh, think you nice of you to notice baby. that <laughs> you could be very fiendish <laughs> He's a uh, I we, hardly we, ever play wicked wicked people but in the Heaven's Gate, I played a wicked person. That was fun. But we couldn't see you through all the smoke in that film. <laughs> you also had to hurry, too, because <laughs> it only showed for about four days. <laughs> it's HBO and stuff. It will be, yeah. yeah. I just want one thing. She is Mary. Blythe is Mary. Blythe is in Blythe Spirit. That's a strange name, Blythe. Yeah. Pretty name. I was almost Pauline. Well, oh, I'm glad you're Blythe. Blythe. Pauline. After my grandmother, who said, just briefly, I'll tell you, when she heard I was Blythe, she's German, and she said, what? You call her blight? That's a disease of the trees. <laughs> so I'm blight. Well, she's married to Bruce Paltrow, and Bruce Paltrow was the producer of The White Shadow with Ken Howard. And is now producing Seen Elsewhere, which <gasps> we are He's doing that? Takes off like a bullet because it's such a wonderful show. So watch, well, please watch please Seen Elsewhere. Well, Tuesday night on, uh, on another channel. That's on that other <laughs> channel there. But it was just, I am so sorry that White Shadow is no longer in the air because There's it was a, a fine, on. fine program. Yes. It he should be very proud. Thank you acted with him. Ken Howard, didn't you? It, that's for how much. That's why I mean this wonderful family of actors. You know, it's mm -hmm. inevitable that you that you meet up again. Ken and I did Ad Adam's Rib years ago, a very short-lived series, and from that came, grew a relationship between all of uh, Bruce and, and Ken, and they and out of that came the White Shadow. Well, he speaks very highly of you, oh, very cool. highly. Well, break a leg, gang. Okay. Thank you. you too. You're full of spunk. You're yes. Great. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we'll talk about the real thing afterwards, all right? It's oh. called In Defense of Kids. Sam Watterson, Blythe Daner, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Okay, thank you. Continue on. And we'll be back as 10-11 Morning continues.